Jeffrey Kessler, the lawyer representing the union on behalf of Tom Brady tomorrow, says to the commissioner, our first witness in the appeal is Mr. Thomas Dolby. Thomas Dolby, everybody! He comes out and he starts singing Blinding Me With Science right there in the league offices. <laughs> Wouldn't that just be fantastic? Albert Breer, what are the odds of that happening tomorrow? <laughs> Having covered a lot of those, uh, mm -hmm. I can tell you there will likely be no music, Red. <laughs> oh, just other more conventional exhibits. Yeah, just just they'll bring lunch about halfway through the day, okay. Okay. and uh, they will enter and exit the building as quickly as they can. No entrance music. This is a professional box. Okay. This is professional wrestling. No there Burger King. So there'll be there'll be no Burger King, right? There'll be no Burger King standing behind Brady. Well, I'd never I'd never rule him out. Okay. He could pop up anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Albert Breer of the NFL Media Group returning to the Rich Eisen show. Okay, so let's get into this. How's this playing out tomorrow? What's gonna happen tomorrow? Well, yeah, and basically Roger Goodell is gonna preside over the proceeding. Um, on one side you're gonna have Jeff Pash, Adolfo Birch, uh, Kevin Manera, um, and then on the other side you'll have uh, Jeffrey Kessler, um, Tom DePasso, the union's general counsel, and uh, Don Yee, uh, Brady's agent. And they'll present their cases, and they'll be able to present witnesses. And um, some of those witnesses you'll have heard of, like Ted Wells, others you won't have heard of. And um, this is basically Brady's last chance. To present his case for the case he has for his innocence here. Um, after this, if he does go to the federal courts, he's challenging the process, not what actually happened on that night in January. And so, um, the the meat of it is is this is the, the really his final chance to prove his innocence. So uh, Ted Wells is going to be in the same room with Tom Brady tomorrow. Yes, he is. Huh? That yeah, won't be and, awkward. And, and they'll have a chance. I mean, and, and Wells is coming prepared to explain absolutely everything um, in, in the report. Um, I, I, you know, I'm also told that he's going to be prepared to discuss the AEI report, which is the report that came out last week, was published by the New York Times. Um, so there are a lot of moving parts here. I mean, I think one of the things that the league would point out to you is the AEI report uh, basically calls into question the flaws in, in, in the NFL's case, and, and they don't establish Brady's innocence. And that's really the big thing I think the commissioner wants to hear from Brady tomorrow it's not what's the problem with the way we put together our case. It's why are you innocent? Explain to me why I'm supposed to believe that nothing happened in January and nothing happened with footballs before that, even though we had this mountain of circumstantial evidence aside from just the sign. And it's not just AEI. As you mentioned, there was a, 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 an op-ed piece in the Times that, that, that destroyed the collection of the evidence uh, the right. scientific evidence and the conclusions that the Wells report made based off of it. There was an article in the in uh, the Science News over the weekend that I, I mentioned, uh, saying that the the way that the um, information was collected on the championship Sunday wouldn't be allowed even in a high school science fair. So <laughs> so all of that yeah. could be thrown forward. And you're saying at some point, is there just going to be a brass tax moment where they're not going to have some sort of of formal uh, Q and A? and presentation of facts, but just like a sit down and say, look, here's the deal. You didn't cough up the cell phone and I can't get past that, Tom, because of the way that we do things here in the NFL. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then Tom's people say, look, you can't possibly say, based on this scientific evidence, that Brady uh, messed with footballs and knew about it. And, and somehow, some way, everybody gets together and say, let's figure out a way out of this mess. There is, is a way to middle it, all right? And I'd explain it this way. Um, they have to take the lack of cooperation seriously, and this is the part that everybody's overlooking that's a major part of all of this. The NFL just established an investigative arm. You know, that's where they hired Lisa Friel, and the idea is that they won't have to rely on law enforcement to go after guys like Greg Hardy and Adrian Peterson and Ray Rice in the future. Um, you know, so the problem with that is that they don't have subpoena power, and they can't put people under oath. And so what, I mean, what Brady is going to be told tomorrow, what I'm sure he's already been told is we have to take lack of cooperation seriously now. Um, we don't have any choice. If we're, going to make the, if we're going to give teeth to this investigative arm, we can't treat things like we treated them three or four or five years ago. This is different. You know, so we're, you're living in a, in a different set of circumstances, and that set of circumstances is that we have to get people to cooperate with our investigations. And if you don't cooperate, it's going to be punished harshly. So I think that's the part where they kind of have them. Brady could still produce more evidence and give them what they wanted. I think that they would probably treat that as better late than never, but you're still a little late with this. So 
I think there's that part of the punishment that's not going to be touched very much. The other part I could see where they'd say, okay, the science doesn't support it. Um, you know, we, we can't directly pin this on you. There is circumstantial evidence there. So I could see them really reducing that end of it, you know, and saying, okay, we suspended you for four games. Two of that was for lack of cooperation. Two of that was for the violation itself. We'll take the violation itself down to a fine and still stick you with the two games for lack of cooperation. And then, Brady, you'd have a decision to make. That's just a hypothetical, Rich, but I think you, you see where I'm going here, where you can parse lack of cooperation in the violation where the league would still have a chance to come down on Brady and, and, and look like the tougher guy here, and Brady would still get some measure of exoneration, and maybe, maybe there's a clean break if you break things apart that way. Now, what is Albert here with Albert Breer right now? So what would the choice that Brady would have to make should that scenario uh, come up by, by suing the NFL further or just saying, hey, okay, so l let's have Don Yee look at the phone and he'll cough up my agent, will cough up uh, whatever the relevant information you yeah. think that there is, and then, and then let's, let, let's cut this thing down to, to just a fine. I mean, is, is that possible? Or, or, or does Brady say, there's no way I'm handing over my phone? And then yeah. on top of it, Albert, um, all right, just go ahead and answer that, and then I'll have, I have a well, follow-up. I, I, think, I, think I think Brady would be amenable to giving them more information, maybe everything that they've asked for. I'm not sure about that. But if he does, I still think there's an element of, we wanted you to handle this in the front end, so you're going to be punished for not handling this in the front end. So I, I, I think you could wind up getting that piece of the penalty mitigated to some degree. I still think there's going to be a suspension there, whether it's a game, two games, whatever it is. I think that part will stick. Um, you know, I, I think the main priority for Brady in this whole thing is clearing his name. And if he can get the NFL to say we couldn't, we couldn't 100% establish that you were guilty here, Will that be enough? You know, and so um, again, I think there's a creative. And there are going to be a lot of smart people in this room, in that room. You know that. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I think there is a way to find a, to, to to give Brady what he wants, which is to to clear his name to some degree, and still do what you need to do to make sure that you're going to get cooperation and investigations in the future, and that there is some sort of penalty for the violation, even if you can't pin it directly on him. They're just going to have to be creative with it. And what I mean when I say Brady's got a decision to make after that, well, that plays to a larger thing here between the NFL and the NFLPA. Remember, Roger Goodell hasn't presided over an appeals hearing in three years. Um, the NFLPA certainly doesn't want to go backward on that. So um, no matter how Goodell uh, you know, rules in this case, you'd think the NFLPA is going to want to go to court. Um, and on the flip side of it, if the NFL can walk away from this, um, with Brady accepting a penalty, well, then that validates him as the appeals officer again. And that whole mess that they got in three years ago with the Saints case, mm -hmm. now they walk away from, from this with, with Goodell reestablished as the appeals officer, and they can put everything that's gone on the last three years behind. Them. That's my last question for you, Albert, is how much is there of a, uh, of a grinding axe right here that the Players Association has been trying to uh, impugn the commissioner's collectively bargained right to hear these types of things and his ability right. to be the uh, the man in charge of discipline, and it, and and so how much is 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 the the players association going to be factoring in, or or does Brady have to make a decision to basically tell them, look, I'm doing what's best for me, and unfortunately the union's going to have to take a back seat. Yeah, it's a factor. You know, I mean, Brady could say, I want to have control over my suspension. I don't want to carry this into court where maybe a judge throws it out in November, and then I've got to serve my suspension in the stretch run. You know, so Brady could very easily say, you know what, screw it. Like, I, we're, we're in training camp now. I, I, I just want to get on with it. I don't want this storyline to drag on. And then, you know, that would put the union in a little bit of a difficult position because it would validate Goodell as the appeals officer because the appeals process was successful. It didn't go to court, right? Uh, I think both sides feel like that storyline's a little overblown in all of this. Here's why. Um, you know, I, I think the union feels like, you know, on, uh, for, for their part, that if the Barbara Jones ruling on Ray Rice didn't change it, and if the Paul Tagliabue ruling on the Saints didn't change it, then this certainly won't change what's in the CBA. And I think the league looks at it like, well, you know, fine. You know, maybe those things didn't really work out, but you still negotiated what you negotiated. And we're not going to let the Tom Brady case serve as a jumping-off point for you to renegotiate something 
that you put in the CBA four years ago. So it's a little complicated from that um, standpoint, and, and that's where it becomes not about Brady and the footballs at all. Um, you know, but I, I do think both sides um, look at this and, and think that storyline is a little overblown just because it's unlikely that anything's going to change. Did you, did you draw the stand on a street corner straw for the network, or is that a Judy Batista <laughs> I draw? I this time. No, no. no. I, I'll, I'll see if I can call the league office, though, and have them take my um, take my folding chair out of, out of mothballs. I think it's actually still at 345 Park. Okay. So I'll see if they can pull that out of mothballs and, 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 and pass it on to the next one. All right, Albert, we'll chat down the line. Thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. All right, thanks, guys. You bet. That's Albert Breer. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on audience.